A recap of our top story and the death toll from last evening's attack in London has risen to five and at least 40 are injured after a lone attacker drove a car along a pavement in Westminster, stabbed a policeman and was shot dead by police in the grounds of Parliament. While leaders including the United States, Germany and France have expressed solidarity with the UK in the wake of the London attack. British Prime Minister Theresa May said the attack was sick and depraved and struck at values of liberty, democracy and freedom of speech. End of images, courtesy of Reuters, that you're seeing uh, outside the Houses of Parliament in London. Uh, you can just see security manning that area cordoned off as investigations continue. Uh, remember, as I mentioned, there five people were killed, 40 others injured, including a police officer who was uh, stabbed by the attacker. And the Prime Minister saying yesterday that the location of this attack being at the centre of the capital and outside the Houses of Parliament was no accident. Remember, she was within Parliament buildings when this attack took place, was quickly whisked away, her aides later confirming her safety, and of course she addressed the nation. And uh, the, U uh, the other countries that we've had there, the U.S. Uh, calling in to stand in solidarity with the United Kingdom. Officials also indicated that this particular attacker could have been inspired by international and Islamist-related terrorism. So we'll continue to get uh, more details of that as the investigations continue and bring them to you right here on Worldview and throughout the day on our other bulletins. Let's shift gears and we want to turn our attention to the electoral process here in Kenya. With just 137 days to the general election, the registration process for Kenyans at home and those in the diaspora concluded earlier this month. However, there is growing concern among Kenyans living away from East and South Africa that they are being locked out of the electoral process. And now, according to figures released by the IEBC, only 1,521 uh, Kenyans living in the diaspora were uh, actually registered. Those were figures that were released. Those were the new voters living in East and South Africa. They were registered in that two-week drive that ended on March the 6th. South Africa registered the most numbers of 665, followed by Tanzania with 361, then Uganda with 247. Rwanda and Burundi saw 201 and 47 new Kenyans registered, respectively. IEBC chairman Wafula Chebukati said within the same time, there were 798 transfers, while 373 changed their particulars. Now, registration centers were based at the Kenyan High Commission and consulates in respective countries. IBC developed the policy on registration as voters for Kenyan citizens living outside the country and ensuring they vote in the general election. IBC says operational constraints dictated a phased approach in deciding on the number of countries to be considered in line with the diaspora policy. And those on your screen are just some of the figures that I have been reading out to you uh, from the IEBC Africa comparison. So Tanzania, and to be specific, the regions in Tanzania uh, that were having the registration exercise conducted was Arusha and the capital, Dar es Salaam. There was also Kigali, of course, in Rwanda, Kampala in Uganda, Bujumbura as well, and Pretoria. Those is, uh, these are the areas and the cities where Kenyans living there, should have gone to the High Commission or consulate in their respective uh, cities, those ones that I've mentioned, to register. And those are the numbers that were collected and compiled, rather, by the IEBC. Now, joining us in studio to talk more about this is Emily Mogeni. She lives in the United States, uh, so Kenyan diaspora, and also CEO of IBEBA. Thank you, Emily, for joining us. Thank you. So what is your concern with the registration of voters in the diaspora? Okay, um, first of all, I represent Kenya Diaspora Association. We have a group called KEPAM, mm -hmm. Kenya Patriotic Movement, and our concern is to ensure that Kenyans are fairly, you know, represented all over the world to participate in the ne uh, next general elections. Mm -hmm. And so for, for us as a group, we want to ensure that... Uh, we wanted to ensure that Kenyans uh, abroad, especially in the United States mm -hmm. and Europe and Asia, have the right to vote, mm -hmm. which unfortunately is not the case. Mm -hmm. We've been cut off from that participation. And uh, our main concern is what is the IEBC going to do to ensure that 
we don't miss again in the next in the following general elections mm. because uh, Kenyans abroad are about over a hundred I mean 250,000 and uh, most of these are people who have the best interest for Kenya and they want to be able to vote mm -hmm. for the leaders they feel that represent the Kenyans you know uh, leaders who are able to represent the country okay. as a nationalist so and you, not a tribalist. Yeah. You yeah. definitely have been following uh, perhaps the electoral process in Kenya. We have one uh, of just set slightly over 100 days to go to the general sure. election. And you have seen some of the challenges the IBC has faced, including new commissioners mm -hmm. uh, coming into office in just a short time. And they have explained, you know, the reason why the registration has been uh, only, you know, geared towards registering diaspora in East Africa and South Africa operational cost. Yeah. Do you understand that? We do. Mm -hmm. But then we also are concerned because IEBC as an independent body has not put or has not demonstrated that they are serious with their job. You know, they have not demonstrated that they are willing to work with Kenyans abroad to come up with systems or mechanisms to ensure that Kenyans are able to vote. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been cut off. IEBC has never come to the United States and face Kenyans and say, we're trying to form or develop a system so that you can be able to participate in these elections. We're mm -hmm. cut off. We Are don't laws to in it. place to facilitate that? Is it purely IEBC or do we have a gap as well in as far as legislation? I believe it's IEBC. As a body, it's up to IEBC to mm -hmm. ensure Kenyans are able to vote. But I think as a Kenyan too, every Kenyan has a constitutional right to mm -hmm. vote. Mm -hmm. So it's up to the system. They put up an institution which is supposed to represent that uh, that work, I mean, which is supposed to ensure that the election, uh, elections are done fairly mm -hmm. and squarely. Right. So I feel like it's the, uh, the IBC is the one that has failed the Kenyans. Yes. Yes. And uh, one would uh, imagine that if uh, politicians, especially here in Kenya, felt that they are, the diaspora was significant. And, yeah. you know, the numbers are big, as you say, yes, but they clearly are. they're mm -hmm. not pushing even for that, you know, efficiency and inclusion of the diaspora because perhaps they sense the diaspora is not that involved anyway, even if there was all the systems put in place, perhaps those votes or the basket in as far as voters is concerned is not sufficient. How do you rope in the politicians to do your bidding for you as well? Uh, well, we do play a huge role for this country, especially the money that we made home. We send billions of uh, dollars or rather shillings mm -hmm. to Kenya every year. We support our families, so I think our politicians, we do get politicians coming to the U.S. where I live. Every month we have we're not hearing county them government. Saying ensure everything is done to they register They come diaspora. there, they promise us, they tell us you will be included in the next general elections, we'll be creating more jobs and bring you home. We have experts abroad, mm -hmm. doctors, you know. Look at the situation with the, doctor, the doctors back at home here. We're now hiring 500 doctors from Tanzania. But we have Kenyan doctors uh, abroad who are willing to come back home. But the, the way the situation is, they come there, they tell us, we'll, you know, we'll create these parts for you to come home, create jobs for you. But then when they come here, everything stops by the time they land to, back to Kenya. Mm. Nothing goes on. So know. what are your options, legally speaking? Because you're saying IABC has failed you. It is all in their purview to be able to do and help and uh, rectify the issues as they stand. Are you seeking any legal recourse? Um, we don't really have a way forward from here. I mean, at this point, since the elections are only 100 days away from now, it's going to be a miracle for IBC to do anything with us in the diaspora. But we're hoping after these general elections, mm -hmm. IBC will come together and politicians, and the future politicians, mm -hmm. will come together and work with the diaspora groups like us, the Kenya Patriotic Movement, mm. and come up with systems to ensure that we are being participate. We will participate in the next general election. So you're in going to keep this sustained up yes. to the next election? Not really sustained. It's only that it, the time is limited. We don't have the time to do anything at this point. Yeah. But we're passing our, you know, we're giving out our views. We feel disappointed, but we're hoping that the next general elections, the next government will work, will put this as a priority and ensure Kenyans abroad are able to vote and choose leaders that they feel represent Kenya as a country and not tribes, you know. All right. How yeah. long have you been in the U.S.? I've been there for 12 years. All right. Do you yeah. plan to come back? I plan to come back. I plan to be a Kenyan 
living here. You're still a Kenyan? Yes, I'm an American, I'm a, an American citizen yeah. and I'm an American, a Kenyan citizen. Yes. But I want to be, I want to put Kenya first before being an American. Okay. So I want to come back home. But right. then I can only come home if, you know, we have a, a clear government in place, mm -hmm. hopefully in the next elections. In the next elections. Yeah, that will ensure Even that. a clear government in place, isn't this one clear? Uh, there's a lot of, uh, there are so many issues going on. These, they, they are not really accountable or transparent, uh, transparent with their governance. I feel like they've failed Kenyans. There's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of tribalism. There's a lot of nepotism. And we, we feel like there are some uh, small tribes which have been cut off from the government from sharing the cake. Okay. Even though we are all paying taxes and we're all voting, you know. All right. Yeah. Many thanks for joining us. Emily Mogheni. Emily Mogheni is a Kenyan diaspora, lives in the U.S., as you may have just heard, and she's also CEO of Beba with us here on Worldview. Before we wrap up, we had asked you on our Twitter poll question, do you think it is time to have Amisom pull out of Somalia? Remember, uh, Amisom marking 10 years since uh, they went into Somalia, Kenya being one of the countries contributing to the troops there. And 64% of you are saying, yes, it is time to pull out. Uh, however, 36 uh, disagree with that. Here's what your, some of you are saying. Edgar Nalemba, you're saying, let KDF keep the spirit high. The source of where the militants are is Somalia. Let them destroy the source. Then Ekavingo, the amount of money, resources, and lives lost in just, is just too much. Better off letting the people of Somalia handle their own. Farouk, you said the Somali people are not comfortable with the continued stay there. Let's pack and leave. Uh, Akida, you said let the KDF keep the uh, efforts in Somalia continuing. Washira Gitahi, the Somalians who went, who want Amisom soldiers out of Somalia are Kenyan enemies. Kenya will be on fire if Amisom leaves. Let's all be aware. Jack Olang, uh, you're saying it is important that the troops continue to stay there. And the amount of money, another one here from Vingo being spent is a lot. And also Mark Mchuma, our soldiers are dying, protecting another country. I don't think that's fair to them or to their families. We thank you very much for engaging with us here on Wild View. On behalf of the team, again, for also watching, it has been a pleasure to have your company. My name is Sophia Wanuna. Betty Kialo is coming up with News Center. Stay with us.